it's Mary. I hope that you are doing well and I'm so glad you joined me here today. With our creative project today, I'm going to revisit a couple of things we did this past summer. Um, vision boards and macrame. So this was the vision board that I made during the summer. And on it, there are pictures of some of my ancestors. There was this element that I included because there were linen weavers in my past and that kind of tied in the weaving. And then this was a quote that I had found that I really liked. And then we did some macrame this summer. And I decided that the macrame could symbolize the linen weavers in my past. So let me show you what I came up with to do. So earlier this summer we made a macrame bracelet, very much like that one. And in that video, I talked about how you could use a different macrame knot and kind of put a twist in it. And that's got the twist in it. So I started thinking about my family history and the people in it that I felt I shared some traits with and a few other things. And I decided that for my family history project, what I would do is macrame a wrap bracelet. And so these are some of the things I'm going to use to make my macrame wrap bracelet. So I decided the people I was going to focus on in my family history project would be two of my ancestors and myself. And so I feel like there are some things that tie me to my mom's dad, so my maternal grandfather, and my dad's mom. Also, at one point in her life, she lost her first child right after he was born. And I've never lost a child, but I never had children. So I feel like, at least for part of our lives, we shared that not having children as a bond. Um, my mom's dad, so my paternal grandfather, I was actually due to be born on his birthday. So we always like shared birthday cakes and we had that tie. And I also feel like people really didn't understand him or appreciate who he was. And I don't mean his immediate family, but extended family members, I sometimes feel just didn't get who he was. And I feel that way that a lot of times people don't get who I am. So those are kind of the reasons I decided to focus on those ancestors. And like I said, I'm going to create something with macrame to represent the weaving in my family history. I went with the twist. Oh, I'm wearing one now. So I went with the twist knot for the twisted knot for the macrame because to me that's very reminiscent of like the double helix in your DNA strand. So I feel like that shape will represent the bonds of DNA in our family. So I'm going to create a wrap bracelet. Was determine the length of the bracelet by the number of knots that I put in it. And the number of knots is going to be equal to the age of my grandmother when she died, the age of my grandfather when he died, and the age that I am now. So I'm going to start with my grandmother as I do the knotting and do the number of years that she lived. Then I'll move on to my grandfather, do the number of years that he lived, and then I'll move on to myself and do the number of years that I've been living so far. So I will run through the materials we're going to use, and I've got beads, a pair of scissors, some tape, four-ply crochet yarn, 
a ruler, and a pencil. And to set this up, we're going to do it the same way we did the last time. But because this is a wrap bracelet, I cut the macrame yarn much longer. It is, I cut it to 25 feet. To get started, we're going to take the macrame yarn, fold it over the pencil, and pull that through. And again, it's a lot. And there is the first one. And we're going to do the second, the same with the second piece of macrame yarn. And because this is a wrap bracelet, it did have to be longer yarn. And my yarn was 25 feet long. So there we are so far. I am going to tape that pencil down and then I'll separate the strands. So that we can get started making our knots. And as I've done in the other macrame video and other videos in general, I'm not going to make you watch me make the whole thing. I am just going to get started and then bring it to a certain point, show you some of the things you do. And then we will part for a while, come back, and finish it up. So I've got the macrame set up and ready to go. I have the left strand wrapped around this piece of cardboard just to keep it more under control. The two middle strands are taped together, and then the right strand is wrapped around this cardboard to keep, help keep that under control. I've also chosen the bead I'm going to use for this project, and I'm going to attach that to the middle strands in much the same way I did on our last macrame video. So I'm just making a little stronger area with the tape. going to cut that at an angle pull it through and then bring it all the way up here so I've got the bead tape down and I'm also just going to wind up these middle two strands to get the, well, wind the edge together. And then leave it sit there. I'm going to bring you in closer so you can see the knot work. And we'll get started. So for this project, I decided that one knot or one year would be equal to using both strands. So two knots will make one knot, kind of. Um, and with this twisted square knot, we're just going to take from the left side all the time. But to do that, I'm using, I have two different color binder clips on there so I can keep track of whether it's the first part of the knot or the second part of the knot because sometimes my mind starts to wander and I don't keep track of where I am. So under, over, over, through, 
pull it tighter. And then from this side again, under, over, over, through. So for my project, that is equal to one knot or one year life. So I'm just going to keep going. So that is two. until I get to a point where it's twisting so much that I need to do something about it. So I'll come back and talk to you about that at that point. So I've been able to keep knotting up until this point fine, but it's getting to the point where I'm not able to keep the knot straight. So what I'm going to do is tape that down and as I periodically get to the point where it's twisted so much that I can't keep knotting, I will add another piece of tape to hold it down. So I'm just going to keep doing this. And as I do this, I'm going to think about like what my grandmother was doing when she was five or what she was doing at the different points in time. And when I get further along, we'll come back and show you a finished bracelet. So this project ended up taking quite a bit of time to make. But I do have the finished bracelet. Um, and so I started off with 25 feet of macrame yarn. And I actually did use just about all 25 feet of it. My finished bracelet is about 34 inches long. And kind of the cool thing about this is if I wanted, I could use it as a longer necklace. Or I can use it as the wrap bracelet I made it as. I am able to put it on, wear it, it's a little loose, but I like looser bracelets anyway. And I did also, there, I cut the end and made a little tassel because there is a picture of my grandmother with a necklace that has a tassel on it, so I thought that was kind of cool. So I decided that most of the time I would wear this as a bracelet, mainly because um, bracelets and rings are two pieces of jewelry that you see more. Like if you're wearing a necklace, unless it's a really long one, I don't really see it unless I look in the mirror. So with the bracelet, I am able to see it every time I look at my wrist. I'm reminded of my grandmother, my grandfather, and the quote that was on my vision board you are the result of the love of thousands. So that quote and this bracelet will remind me to value my life more than perhaps I have in the past. I did want to grab the vision board one more time so we could take a look at it and take a look at the finished project from it. I will be creating more family history art projects from this vision board, but I wanted to share the first one that I created with you. If you 
also, if you also created a vision board, I'd love to know what you created from your vision board. So I will be coming back with more creating videos because it is fall now and not summer. I will not be doing them as frequently as I was during the summer. So it'll be a two to three week schedule for posting going into the fall and the winter. Thank you for joining me today. Whatever you create, have fun.